Flex for, for all of us, for me, is really a, a block of time throughout the day that is structured enough for our students, uh, but gives them a little bit of an opportunity to do something that is non-credit bearing, really like a fun, more engaging activity where students are free to socialize in a respectful way. The primary purpose of Flex is to give students um, more of a voice and, and an active choice in an activity each day within their, uh, within their school day. The commonality or the common thread of the various Flex activities that are facilitated and run by our teachers uh, are that they are fun activities first and foremost, which are not uh, typically found in the school day. So examples of some of the more successful um, and popular flex activities uh, which students have been participating in have been uh, jewelry making, uh, playing video games with teachers, uh, cooking and baking, riding bicycles outside, uh, different um, games on the field outside, trivia within the classroom, listening to uh, heavy metal music, uh, which, which has been my flex activity. I run an unplugged so for 30 minutes, I try to challenge my students to be off their phones. And that has kind of turned into students using um, like the fingerboards, tech decks, and they really love it. They're actually making ramps and, um, and little like skateboard parks in ceramics class, like during the school day, which is awesome. So it's kind of turned into a little like cult following, which is nice. Uh, and again, the, the primary purpose of Flex is uh, to get students involved in activities that they are choosing, uh, working with their teachers and, and just spending time with their teachers in a non-academic setting. Um, relationships are, are better you know, formed and, and become um, you know, very positive in these activities where students really get to see uh, a different side of their teacher as the teacher is, has chosen to facilitate an activity that, that they are interested in. A student I saw the other day was in crocheting and knitting. And it's interesting because he's in occupational therapy two times a week and he doesn't even realize that he's reaching his goals by just crocheting in the middle part of the day. So I think it's really awesome that our students are getting to experience all these different things. Another uh, very uh, helpful and positive component of Flex has been, uh, again, that idea of building a, a different type of relationship and in many cases a stronger relationship with, um, with your students. So, uh, I can have students who sign up for my flex activity uh, who I don't, who I do not have in an academic class, but now when I see that student on campus, uh, it's a familiar face. We have a common interest. Uh, we have things to talk about, you know, possibly next year, later on down the line, I have that student in class, that bond has already been formed. Conversely, I, you know, when you have students who sign up for your flex activity who you do work with in an academic class, it's, it's another, um, it's, it's seeing that student and vice versa, them seeing you in another light, right? So whereas now I'm not teaching about the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, I'm talking about my favorite types of music and sharing that, um, that interest of mine uh, with the students who've chosen that group. So uh, many, many positive uh, aspects can come from flex. And again, it's very informal once you know, once the activity gets going. So once we see something really great happening in uh, one of the flex activities or even classes, it's really important to highlight the positive changes that are happening with our students. Uh, so absolutely, it's definitely communicated across the board. Yeah.